when he came up last night, just blessed my socks off. We were up here and he was just talking and giving his testimony. And I thank God for young men like that. And I was, I was sharing with him how, you know, we are the body of Christ. But there are 41,000 different denominations in the world today. And I don't think that the Lord looks at his bride and sees the bride that he wants. But tonight when he looks down upon what we have here, I'm sure he's smiling because we've come together, we've laid aside our differences, and we said, let's just come worship God. Let's just go after God, and let's just receive what God wants. What God, and let's just, let's, let's just come in. I think my battery might be one day or something. It just keeps cutting out. Or maybe that might be my voice. I don't know. One, two. But praise God. It is just, it's just so good. So Steve, tonight we just want to we want to bless you, and uh, we just want you to come share what God's put on your heart. I know, um, I, I just, I feel this tonight, um, I felt this when I was standing up here, there's someone here tonight who, who is dealing with some pain in their, in their left knee area, um, you know, that's what we need to do tonight, and there's someone here also tonight that, in the middle of your back, about the center vertebrae. I just I felt this actually last night. And then also Chuck felt the same thing. And I, I just felt like it was a word of knowledge from God. So there's someone here tonight who God's going to give your back. So if you're here tonight and that's you, when we get to the point where we first start praying for people, come up and receive your healing because I believe God's going to heal you tonight. Amen. So praise God. Thank you. This one. Steve, if you want to come. Let's give him a hand. 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 I just want to pray tonight for Steve. Lord, I just ask that you just anoint our brother tonight, God, that you would just flow through him, Lord, and use him as a conduit of your healing touch. We just release the healing power of Jesus over the remainder of the service. Holy Spirit, come. Just have your way. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to spring more right into that word, which is just that word knowledge. And so, if you're here tonight, and that's you, some, what was in the leg? Help us again. The leg on the left leg. The left leg? The leg behind the left leg and the center of the back, the vertebrae in the center of the back. The center of the back, left leg, behind the knee. Is that, that's you? Okay. Just step out the aisle right there. Thank you, Lord. Back. Anyone else with a knee? Yes, sir. Stand up, please. Go ahead and stand up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. You're part of that. Come on. Step out the aisle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can come forward if you want. You can still stay with God, but if you want, that's fine. That's fine. Come on. Go a little further. Come on. That's you, sir. You can't stand? Oh, okay. Okay. All right, just shake your hands up. Just shake your hands. Just shake your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There it is. There it is. Thank you. 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 Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Where, where was the pain? Did you have pain before? Did you have pain? Okay, there we go. It didn't hurt to you. Okay. Which was it? The leg or the back? Me? Can you do something that would kind of test that knee to see how it is? Do some spots or jumping jacks? I'll be on the side of the knee. Run around the block? It doesn't hurt all the time. Okay. Okay.
Chiba.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I preach from down here? Can I speak from down here? Is that okay? Can we use that one? Okay, thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thanks. Well, I'm Steve Dreesen. This is my wife, Joan. And uh, we've been married 40, 44 years. 43 years. Okay, 43 years we've been married. We have three children, and then we have 10 grandchildren. The oldest grandchild is 20, and the youngest is under two. So that's, that's kind of our world, where our family's at. Uh, we moved down here, as you can tell, from the north, because I do not have a southern accent, do I? Going like, well, Lord, you've got to give me my soda so I can talk soda. <laughs> well, <laughs> so we're fixing to have a good time tonight, amen? amen. All right. So that's about the extent of it. <laughs> I do want to say this before I give you one. I want to tell you a little bit about who we are and what's going on with us. But as you were opening up here tonight talking about different things that were going on and in your body and uh, your wife and, and some others, uh, this, the Lord spoke this to me and he said, the enemy will confront you the hardest in the area that God is about to give you breakthrough. The enemy will confront you the hardest and resist you the most in the area that God is fixing to give you breakthrough. Let me say it again. He's a settle in. He's a settle in. I want you to so so to summarize. Probably all of us are up against something. There's there's a there's a struggle that we're engaged in, whatever it may be. There's a struggle that we're engaged in. And the reason we're engaged in that struggle is because the enemy understands and recognizes that God is about ready to give you breakthrough in that area. And he's resisting you the hardest in that particular area at this time because he knows how close you are to your breakthrough. Amen. Okay? Come on, listen to me. Listen to me. Amen? Amen. In football, in football there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an area called the red zone, and it's from the 10 yard line to the goal. And that's where the defense will put up its greatest effort to keep the offense from crossing the goal line and scoring. And so that's what I saw here. I saw that you're up against that red, you're in that red zone, and you're pushing in, and you're pushing in, and you're pushing in. Don't give up. Do not give up. Your breakthrough is coming. Your greatest breakthrough is, is, is right at the edge. You're right at the edge of that breakthrough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sir, I don't know who you are, but please stand up. Yeah, you with the you with the beating. Please stand up and now. Just right, stand up right there. Thank you, Lord. Sir, can you lift your hands up for me and close your eyes? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just release your presence all over my brother. From the top of his head. To the souls of the state. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are a warrior, sir. You are a warrior. A warrior. Yes. Yes, you are a warrior. Okay? You are a warrior. And you you've had you've had a warring heart. You've got a warring spirit. And a lot of times you didn't know how to use that properly and it's got you into trouble. But the Lord is working in your life and he's, he's, he's shifting things in your heart. It's a heart issue. It's, it's a wound that causes us to respond incorrectly to the things that God places in our lives and especially uh, people who come to help us and people who come to uh, uh, even give us direction and to pull us to the next level in our lives. 
And if we don't recognize that, we miss out on that, we miss out on what the Lord wants to do and how the Lord wants to bring us into that next level and the next chapter of our lives. But you're a warrior, and the Lord says that you, he's going to use that, 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 that strength. And, and there's, there's, a, there's a certain honor. You understand honor in, in, in the terms of warriors also. You understand honor. And God's going to, he's going to show you how to connect properly with like-minded men and women who are also warriors. And you're going to have honor towards them. You're going to have honor towards you. And the Lord's going to repair it and, and he's going to restore your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Prophets are strange. And so, but I hang out with a couple of them, okay? So I get some of that strangeness runs up from this guy to me. So I just can't help myself. Is that okay? All right. I hope you're used to this. It's okay, Pastor. I hope this is okay. If it's not, I'll, I'll, I'll stop doing it right now. I'm not behaving myself. You let me know, okay? All right. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Praise God. Um, so, my wife and I moved down here from Wisconsin, actually, uh, about three years ago, a little more than three years ago. And uh, the Lord spoke to me about coming down here, and he said that we were to start and establish healing rooms. And when I first heard that, I thought, well, surely, surely Nashville must be filled with healing rooms. There must be healing rooms all over. The state of Tennessee, sure, it must be. And so I, but we were associated with the International Association of Healing Rooms. If you can look them up, healingrooms.com. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And so I looked at them and sure enough, there were no healing rooms in Nashville. And in fact, there are no healing rooms in Little Tennessee. And I thought, huh. Is it that hot? Is it that hot? There were a few on the uh, uh, east side, not really area. There's a few. There's about a handful out there. But in Middle Tennessee, Washington, Tennessee, there were no meeting rooms that were associated with the International Association of Human Rooms and Spokane. And so I called them up and we talked and one thing led to another. And so we thought that was one of the things we were supposed to do when we came down here. Now somebody would say, well, why? Why, 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 why is the healing room necessary? Why can't we just have healing as part of the local church? And, and, and because we all need a healing. Everybody here tonight believes in healing, right? Amen. 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 Okay. And, and so I asked the Lord about that too. I said, you know, God, what, you know, how, how, do we, how do we express this? How do we explain what it is that we're doing? Not that we're doing something different, but we're doing something different. You know, hamburgers were always hamburgers around for, for centuries. McDonald's did not invent hamburgers. Did you know that? Huh? Okay. McDonald's did not invent hamburgers. Hamburgers were around way before Mr. Cox came up with the idea of having a restaurant called McDonald's. But there's McDonald's restaurants just about every street corner, every interstate intersection. I mean, you go all, any place you want to go, and the golden arches are glowing and glowing. And, you know, okay? Spring Hill, we're, we're now a city of 30,000. We have three McDonald's restaurants. What? What, what, is it, what is it about McDonald's restaurants that separates the burger joints? They specialize. They specialize in hamburgers and fast food. And they do it well. And they raise the banner. You know what you're going to get when you go to the Golden Arches. You know what to expect. You're going to get good service. You're going to get it fast. You're going to get it hot. And it's going to be tasty and not good for you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but we like it. We must, because we've got three of them. We must like them a lot, okay? And so I saw one when we came off the 24. We came in over this area. I saw one of the golden arches up in the 
a way up in the sky, right? Why, why, is it, why is it that there needs to be a franchise? Because it brings unity. And it makes a statement. The biggest thing is it makes a statement. Why do, why do we need healing rooms? Uh, the reason we need healing rooms is because it makes a statement. And we, don't, we believe in healing. But when we start a healing room, we're saying, you know, we're going to do what we believe. That's, that's, that's another level. That's another level. You know, McDonald's believes in burgers, and a lot of people believe in burgers, but if you don't have a burger place, if you don't have a McDonald's, it's like, okay, well, you can believe what you want, but these guys are doing it. And so we came down here to do it. And, and, and that's what we're doing. And we've been doing it from uh, 2012, and we've had over 300 people come through our healing rooms. And receive your healing over 300. No, that's not bad. That's not bad. We have, we've had people who uh, knew new muscle had grown in the back of their legs. We have people who have scoliosis and straightened out. We've had people with short legs and short arms that grew up. We've had people with severe pain in their backs completely healed, completely gone. We've seen we've seen all kinds of healings going on. Ah, there's, there's some that we're still pressing in for. There's some that we're still striving for. I know what I said? The enemy will confront you in the area that God's about ready to give you your greatest breakthrough. And so we're, we're confronting things. We're confronting things in the healing rooms because God's about ready to give us breakthrough in those areas. And we're excited about that. We're saying, yeah, God. Because the more, the, the, the more difficult the struggle is, we know the greater the victory is going to be. How many go to the gym? Okay. When I said McDonald's, I saw a lot of hands go up. Now I asked about the gym, and I tell you what, I didn't see any hands go up. Okay? So anyway. <laughs> just just make an observation, that's all. Okay, so, <laughs> so so at the gym, the gym that I go to, it says right on the wall, the greater the conflict, the greater the victory. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? The greater the conflict, the greater the victory. Ladies know this in childbirth. Come on. That's a conflict. Oh, my. I was there when my, my, when my wife was delivering, and, and there, there's a conflict going on there. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's so, so, but there's a victory coming. There's a victory but it's all over. And it's all over. It's like, okay, that was worth it. You know what? This is, this is good. The victory's here now. Amen? Amen? So there's victory coming. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, there's victory coming. Amen. Praise God. So, so I want to talk a little bit about getting your room. So I'll just give you kind of a sketch of who we are, what's going on. And, and our vision is to bring you to people in this region through the training and releasing of God's people to do the work of the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. How many know there's no sickness in heaven? How many really believe that? And I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious because, you know, Jesus said, this is how you're supposed to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where? Where, where, where was the kingdom supposed to come to? Where, where was the kingdom supposed to come to earth? Because he, he clarifies it in the next statement. He says, your will, thy will, be done on earth. On earth. Is this, is this earth? Okay, right? Yep. So we qualify. Amen? Amen. We're, we're, hey, we're in good, we're in good shape. We qualify. We qualify for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, you just told me there's no sickness in heaven. Now, do you, do, you, do you really believe that? Well, then, if that's the case, then there should not be any sickness on planet Earth. Mm. Mm. I see a contradiction. I see a contradiction. Somebody said, you know, the church, the church believes something. They say they believe something. But their actions don't coincide. 
I'm not just going to be rude with you, okay? I'm just going to ask you some questions because, and you don't need to answer them, these are rhetorical. But, but, but when you're sick, what's the first thing you do? Pray? Or go to the doctor? I'm just asking, just asking. Yeah, I'm just, just asking. No, no need to respond to you, so let me blank stare is fine. I'm just asking. I'm just, I, want you to, I want you to think, see, see, the man, the man came to Jesus one day and his son was in bad shape. And, and the Lord said to the man, he said, if you can believe. And the father said to him, he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. That's contradiction. What, what was he saying? What was he saying? Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. We can believe up here. Mental assent. I agree with the Word of God mentally, and I ascend to the Word of God. I believe what the Word of God says up here. It makes sense. Yes, I, I agree. I, but down here is a reality. Where is unbelief? Is unbelief here? No. Unbelief is not in mind, it's in heart. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. My unbelief, Lord, I believe, I, 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 I see the signs and the wonders that you're doing. I see the healings that you've been doing. I heard the testimony of what you've been doing. I believe. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelieving heart. Because if we don't believe in the heart, Jesus said, what a man believes in his heart, what he prays for and asks for in her praises, that's the things he's going to receive. So if we don't believe in our hearts, okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to back this up. If you've been praying for healing or somebody's been praying for you to be healed and you haven't received your healing yet, how, how is it that you haven't received your healing? Why hasn't well, God's just not ready to heal me yet. Really? Is that right? I want you to show me that in the Bible. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to hurt a little bit, but I'm going to help you out, okay? Okay? The majority of the reason we don't see the healings that we need to see is because we have unbelief in our hearts. Oh, my. That would be quiet time. There's unbelief in our hearts. We believe in our minds, and that's good. That's a good place to start. We need to start up here. It says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But transformation doesn't take place in your mind. It takes place in your heart. Our core values. Who are you? I tell people this all the time. If you really knew who you were in Christ Jesus, you'd be very dangerous to You would be so dangerous that you would be on the most wanted list in hell. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You would have a target on your back and on your front side and over the top of your head that every demon in hell would know your name. Isn't that something? But the Lord of hosts would also know your name. And he said, there's my son. There's my daughter. See the work that they're doing. See the kingdom coming to expand through their hands and through their mouth. That's what God wants to do. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. What does the kingdom look like? What does it look like? Well, Jesus expressed the kingdom. He expressed it all the time. He expressed it. How did Jesus express the kingdom? You know that it's recorded 24 times in the book of Matthew where Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, Cleanse the lepers and cast out devils 24 times. Now, when God says something more than once, don't you think we ought to listen? I know my mom I had to say it twice. It was not a good day. <laughs> don't make me tell you again. How many of you remember hearing something like that? Okay? Okay? So when God says something 24 times, Oh my gosh. You think we would get it? Again, yeah, we, we get it up here. We get it up here. But do we really get it in here? 
Because if we really got it in here, really, truthfully, there should be no sickness in the house of the Lord. Oh, think about this for a moment. Think about this for a moment. It says, it says that when the children of Israel left Egypt after eating the Passover. The Passover was a type of Christ. It was a shadow of that which was to come. It was the imperfect shadow of the perfect sacrifice. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. When he hung on the cross, his last breath was, it is finished. It's done. You can't add anything to it, and you can't take anything away from it. It's finished. All requirements of the law were finished. Every curse was broken. Freedom to all the captives. He was the jubilee. He was the perfection that was given up for all of mankind. Paul says it this way, we have a much greater covenant now than what they did to the blood of animals. But listen to this. This says in the Psalms, it says that when the children of Israel left Egypt, they were in bondage, first of all, for 400 years. That's a long time, isn't it? 400 years in bondage. And their numbers have grown to millions. But it says that on the night that they ate the Passover, which was a type of Christ, the next day when they left Egypt, there was not one feeble among them. I want you to think about that. Not one. Nobody was unconscious. Nobody was being carried out on a raft. Nobody was being carried out on the back of a cart because they couldn't walk. There was not one, not one, not one feeble one among them. What did that look like? Could you imagine what would happen, Pastor, if you get your church? The power of God would come on a Sunday morning and everybody in the house was instantly healed and they never got sick again. They put the doctors out of business. I'm in favor for that. I love doctors. I love nurses. I love the medical profession. They keep us alive long enough to get faith to believe for healing. Amen? My dad, bless his heart, He's going to be 89 in a couple of days. And so he's having some health issues. And, and so he just talked, we talked today, and he was in the hospital over at Rooters. And he said, oh, you wouldn't believe it. He says, how many sick people there are? He said, there's so many sick people. He says, the hospital was full. And they had to start shipping them to another hospital out of town. That's, that's the way it is with the hospitals. The hospitals are full. They're full of God's children that believe in healing. You see, because if you didn't believe in healing, you wouldn't go to the doctor. Come on. If you really believe that your healing was a, uh, a, a test from God and he was testing you or that he was uh, purifying you or that he was strengthening you or that he was blessing you, then it would be very wrong for you to try and get rid of that sickness. Yet I don't think there's anybody here that wants to be sick. I mean, if you do, we'll pray for you, okay? Because that's just not. Amen? <laughs> Now, come on, let's be real. That's just, that's just a lot. You want to be sick. Nobody wants to be sick. Yet we're, 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 we're seeing so many people that are. Why? Come on, I'm helping you tonight. I'm helping you tonight. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelieving heart. Help me, God. To have this, the, the faith that I need, mean, the core values of the church must begin to change. 
The greatest tra- you ever hear of transformation? All the things that we're supposed to transform, we're supposed to do this transformation that's coming. I think the greatest transformation is going to take place in the house of the Lord. Because it's in the house of the Lord that the people of God are going to get a revelation of who they really are, and they're going to rise up into that revelation, and they're going to begin to do the works that Jesus did. How many think Jesus was ever sick? Nobody raises their hand. Come on. Seriously, you ever, Jesus never had a sickness? Did he ever catch a cold? Maybe he got the flu. I know what it was. He took the flu virus vaccine, and so he never got the sick. Come on. I want you to think about these things, folks. You know, a lot of times we just we just really don't think about it. We're just kind of like, well, that's just life. I know. We all say, well, so that's just life. Well, it's the flu season. I guess I'm going to get the flu. Unless I go get that flu shot. Why? Because in here, that's really what we believe. That's going to shift. That's going to change. So one of the reasons we came down, and one of the reasons I'm here tonight, is to bring shift, to bring a change. And so we have to recognize, oh wow, man, you know what, I've been thinking about this the whole, the, the, the wrong way, all these years I've been thinking about this the wrong way, I've got to change the way I think. Paul says it, he says, he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You start thinking differently first, and then it begins to get down in here, but it becomes a core value to you. Sickness is not my portion. Talk to your neighbor and tell them, sickness is not my portion. Come on, tell them, tell them.
to live in a garden. Now, there was no sickness in the garden. This is, there was no sickness in the garden. The garden is a metaphor, if you will. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, uh, it's high of the kingdom. The garden was the kingdom. God ruled in the garden. That was his kingdom. That was the king's domain in the garden. And God gave dominion of the garden that he was king of to Adam and Eve. And he said, now you go and take the garden and expand the garden. And the garden was supposed to cover the earth. And I it says, the knowledge of the Lord, well, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the Lord's cover the sea. And so when Jesus came, he came to reestablish the kingdom, the garden. And in the garden, there is no sickness, there's no poverty, there's no fear, there's no anxiety, there's no stress. You say, well, I'm not living in such stress. I've got all this anxiety going on, I'm afraid of everything. Because you were created to live in the garden, and you're not living there. You say, well, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll live in the garden, but we'll, we'll go to heaven when we die. So, uh, well, that's true. But the point that's partially true, yes. Amen. Okay? The heaven is established on the earth. Where is heaven? Where is Jesus? We learned this in Sunday school class when we were little kids. Where is Jesus? Jesus is in my heart. Amen? So the kingdom of God is within. It's within. Well, this is the strangest thing. This is the strangest thing. If the kingdom of God is within, and how about I'm not living the realities of that kingdom? Lord, help my own belief. Help my own belief. Because I was taught for a little while. I was taught for a little while. If you can't see it, if you can't touch it, if you can't hear it, it will exist. And so we have a hard time with this kingdom that we cannot see. Jesus said, I'm going to show you the kingdom. What are you doing? He'll say, That's how. That's real. Think about that. How? How was it that Jesus was showing the kingdom to heal the sick? He was showing the results of the kingdom. This is what it looks like when you live in the kingdom. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Lord, don't you know that by now he doesn't smell so good? He's been there for four days. And it's hard. And so when he called Lazarus from the grave, can you imagine what had to take place in that man's body? All the creative miracles that had to take place in that man's body for him to be able to come out of that grave. I don't think if God can do that, he can do just about anything. How about you? Amen? I think it's impossible. All right. Amen? Amen? So that's why we do healing rooms. The biggest thing, the biggest thing in healing, healing rooms, healing rooms is about, yeah, we're we'll praying for the sick, and y'all are seeing great result, but the greatest result is the transformation that takes place in the minds of people who come and get the training. It's like, wow, this is awesome. It transforms their minds. And now they become bold as a lion. And when someone comes into the healing room, they don't make any difference how sick they are. It doesn't make any difference what the doctor said. I don't care if it's stage four cancer. That's a big devil. Everybody know what's a big devil? That's a big devil. I'll tell you what, there's some great fear in that. that that's, you know, sometimes it's a blow. Okay, all right. Shoo, wow. We've got to break through that. Because greater is he than he's in me than he's in the world. And if this thing's got a name, it's an entity, and it has to follow its feet. The Lord yes. should be Jesus Christ. Yes. You're going to get the Lord in the world. Yes. Every name of his name shall come below his name. His name is exalted. 
exalted above every name. Cancer has a name. It cannot be exalted above the name of Jesus. It has to bow its knee to Jesus' name. We get to that place where we become bold in the Spirit. We become bold in Christ. And we say, no more. No more. That's it. From this day forth, we set the flag. Remember World War II, Hiroshima, the Marines, they set the flag. They said, that's it. We're taking this land. This is ours, and we're not giving it back. And they never did. They never gave it back. And so that's what healing rooms do. They the flag. McDonald's puts the sign up. Yeah, come on. Burgers. You want burgers? We got burgers. You want healing? We got healing. We establish healing in the house. We love to work with the local house. We love to work with the local house and build up the body in the, in the house because it brings an anointing in the house. Not only are the healing rooms powerful, is there an anointing that's in the healing room, but the house itself begins to have an anointing. A light begins to shine upon the house. And healing becomes more often, has almost a popcorn effect. You know, popcorn starts popping, it's a couple of beer, a couple of beer, and one kind of like sets off another, and all of a sudden, you've got the whole works going on at the same time. That's what the Lord does. That's what the Lord does. And so we, we broke through. We broke through many, many different places, many different times. Our goal is to establish healing rooms throughout the whole of the Nashville area. That's what we call healing rooms of Nashville. Greater metropolitan area, middle Tennessee, really. I mean, you know, everybody, in fact, the whole state of Tennessee really is governed by Nashville, Nashville being the state capital. We establish you in this. We say, we're putting the flag down. We're making a bold statement before heaven and earth and hell. And we're saying, not only do we believe in him, but we're going to do it. We're going to do what we believe. And so we've been out on the streets of Nashville. Here you go. How are you doing? Angela has a ministry. She goes out twice a week to, uh, to the streets of Nashville. And she's one of our elders. Big adopted her. <laughs> and she's got an awesome testimony. And I'm going to have you come up just a little bit and show you testimony. Oh, wow. Okay? All right. So I didn't give you a lot of the spot. Give you a little bit of time to right. it. Okay? But we go out on the streets of Nashville. And, uh, yeah, we pray for the sick. Imagine that. And people are getting healed. Wow. Imagine that. Just like, just like you heard from the missionaries down in Argentina or, or in Africa or, or some other third world nation, the missionaries down to tell you about all these awesome things that are happening over there. Most of the church goes, gee, I wish that would happen here. How come God isn't healing here? How come I don't see any healing state place in my church? I'm not criticizing the church. I'm not criticizing the house. I'm just stating the reality. The reality is we believe in healing. Lord, help my unbelief. Because if we really believe in something, we'd be doing it. We'd be doing it. I'm not talking about bread for a sick. I'm talking about healing the sick. There's a difference. Jesus never told us to pray for the sick. He told us to heal the sick. Read your Bible, that's what it says. Uh oh. I can't heal the sick. Really? Then why did Jesus tell you to? It would be wrong. It would be wrong for Jesus to tell you to do something he knows you don't have the power to do. That wouldn't be fair, would it? What is, it? is Jesus fair? Come on, help me out, guys. Is Jesus fair? Okay, come on. So when Jesus tells us to do something, he must know that we are able to do it. Okay? So, so, so how, is it, how is it that we can heal the sick? Because Jesus said so. Well, first of all, he said so. But he didn't leave us alone. He didn't leave us orphaned. He gave us the comforter. He gave us the Holy Spirit to empower us. You shall receive power 
In many different locations, I love the fact that you're saying denominational walls are starting to come down. And the reason for that is because we're, we're growing into maturity. You know, on the playground, I drive bus for the leaders in town. Okay? And so, so I drive bus, and we have high school kids, middle school kids on one route, and we have the elementary school kids on the other route. And there's a huge difference. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is a huge difference between the elementary age children and middle school, maybe not middle school, but towards the end, and high school students. In middle school, it's all about me. It's all me, 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 me. And how loud I can be and how obnoxious, but sorry, how rambunctious I can be. It's all about me. And there's no, there's no maturity, there's no, there's no ownership, there's no understanding, there's no honor. Very little, very little. Until we get older. The older they get, the older they get, the more they understand. And so I see the church, the, the, the house of the Lord, growing and maturing, rising up. We just sang the song. We see an army rising up, right? There's an army rising up. And that's true. There is an army rising up to take its place. To take its place. Amen? Amen. How long have I been going? About an hour? So it's time to go. Okay. I didn't get to my notes. My wife says, you've got such good notes. Why don't you preach your notes? Because I thought this was good. I thought this was pretty good too. Angela, come on up here. We've known Angela about two years, three years, almost three years. And when we first met Angela, Angela wasn't doing so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she did a
surgery, this will be done in 30 minutes before we were really involved what was going on. When we came there, she had already had surgery. And she was recuperating, and yet she was in excruciating pain. She had a lot of pain in her body. She just wasn't there. Sunday morning, I believe it was, or something like this. Maybe it was a Friday night. Maybe it was one of the Friday nights. We have some times Friday nights. Anyway, this may be there. This was a service. And she came up and did a healing line and we prayed for the sick. And I started ministering to her and command the pain to leave. She said, well, we, we teach people authority. Believers, authority. You have authority to command sickness and pain to leave. It has to. In the name of Jesus, it must. It's very odd, but it doesn't. And so I prayed for her, I commanded the pain to leave, I commanded her back to the heel. And then I said, I'll get over and touch your toes. And so she did it. She came back up with white eyes, white, white eyes, white eyes, big, big white eyes. She said, oh my gosh, the pain is completely gone. Completely gone. Completely gone. Completely gone. That's the way Jesus does it. He doesn't finish it. He doesn't it. So as I was preparing for tonight, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to go? He, he, gave, me, he gave me a couple of things. Uh, words of knowledge. One of words of knowledge. And one of them was for Acts. So I know we prayed for a couple of times already. It was very specific. That you were speaking about the backgrounds, it was in the way of in the back and that type of thing. And I don't know if we got everybody or not, but if you're here tonight, you're, you have problems with your back, anything at all. And, uh, and maybe it's an added nerve, or it's down your leg, it's any kind of back issues at all. I just want you to raise your hand. If you're right here, you've got back issues. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, I want you to stand up. Just stand up where you are. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Move around. Do, do something you can do. Bend over, touch your toes, jumping jacks. I don't care whatever you do. Do something. Don't just stand here now. Do something. Do something to check it out. Move your shoulders, move your legs. I don't care whatever you got to do. Check it out. Check it out. Come on. You should look like an aerobics class here. Check it out.
keep going for a bit. Get the ushers in here uh, before I uh, the building. I appreciate it. Can we take the offering? Receive the offering, please. Folks up here, if you've got your cards with you, your, your offering, whatever it might be. If not, go back and get them if you want, bring, because we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to pray until it's all up. All said and done, so it's going to be going to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Thank you.